Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for uh, for checking out the uh, the episode. Uh, I do hope you hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all the interviews that I put out every single week. And doing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three a week to keep you up to date on your favorite artists and discover those new ones. You can do so any of the usual podcast places, including uh, Spotify and Apple Podcast at NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, so excited not just to be talking with actor, musician Michael Shannon and musician Jason Narducci, but also to be talking to them about this little band right here, R.E.M., uh, one of our uh, collective favorite bands, uh, Michael Shannon and Jason Narducci, are uh, touring and covering the first R.E.M. album, Murmur, in its entirety, plus some other a smattering of other R.E.M. songs. But it's uh, it's for the uh, 40th anniversary of uh, of Murmur, which happened in 2023. It was released in 1983. Now, Michael Shannon, of course, you know him as one of the great actors of our time. He has been in everything lately from uh, Knives Out and Bullet Train, Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. He was in uh, Mud, Midnight Special. He's in the uh, Bike Riders this year. And Jason Narducci, one of the great uh, musicians of our time, uh, playing in, uh, his, well, his solo thing, Split Single. I've seen him so many times with uh, Bob Mold over the years. Uh, and uh, and he, he's sort of a jack of all trades and, and plays with a lot of folks. So again, they've been teaming up over the years, doing some covers, and it's all, well, I can't say it's led to this because hopefully there's more of this afterwards, but at the moment, it's led to this moment where they're covering R.E.M. So we're going to be talking about what Murr means to us all when they first discovered the band. Uh, and uh, and then when they finally got around to discovering this album as well, what it's been like playing it, you know, uh, Stipes uh, was kind of uh, uh, infamous for his uh, mumbly, mumbly type of vocals in those early days. So I want to hear about what that's like uh, singing that, what Michael's been like singing that. And on Jason's side, you know, tackling some of those great Peter Buck uh, riffs. And uh, and we'll get the update on what they've been up to lately as well in their musical uh, musical lives. So let's jump into it and talk about uh, talk about REM's Murmur and the tour that they're on. It's Kyle Meredith with Michael Shannon and Jason Narducci. Uh, can, can I have five minutes to work on my hair? <laughs> All the time you need from me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. yeah, it's nice and gray and dry, and it's very January outside. So in case you're, you know, I'm I'm from Lexington, you know. Yeah, no, it's. Yeah. I was about to say, in case you're missing anything from uh from the home area, you'd have no reason to right now. <laughs> <laughs> so here you guys are. You're you're doing uh touring. This is the first time you've toured together, right? So we're talking uh, February fourth through the fourteenth, and uh, and taking on REM's Murmur. So first off, hello. It's actually it's... February first. February first is okay. The first show. Yeah, well, well, yeah, so this is exciting, but you know, I don't know if you guys can see this behind me. You know, I've got all the the posters and everything, and of course, Stipe kind of sits over my shoulder. We're taping this on his birthday. I don't know if that was planned yes. on you guys, but today's his sixty fourth birthday. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Like, yeah, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. wow, so it's kind of nice. Head. So, I, I, for the people who don't know, why are you covering Murmur? Because it's it it kind of lines up with last year's anniversary, right? Uh, you know, Jason was kind of poking me about doing a show and asking what we should do. And and then, it, yeah, he was the one who came up with it. He said, you know, it's the 40th anniversary of Murmur this year. And uh, I, I mean, not that I've ever been entirely comfortable with any of the projects we picked out, uh, but that one I felt was particularly uh, daunting. I think I was, didn't I respond like, are you sure? Or I don't know. <laughs> well, I knew you loved. The, I knew you loved the band. I knew yeah, that part was yeah. But it was just kind of like, it was kind of like saying, "Hey, why don't we, why don't we paint the Mona Lisa?" Or something. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'll get my I'll get my watercolors and meet you in the garage. Uh, <laughs> it was it was yeah. I was pretty terrified, but but you know, I mean, I guess when they made the record, they were all fledgling uh, musicians themselves so I, I was like well at least we're not trying to do a record 20 years into their career um but it's uh yeah anyway that's how it started yeah 
Do you all remember, Jason, like for you, do you remember like when this record impacted you? Because I came on to R.E.M. a little bit later. Um, but, you know, catching up and hearing about, especially when people found them in the early 80s or mid 80s or, you know, whenever it was for you, but especially this record. Like, do you remember that moment for you? I do. Uh, and it's uh, Mike and I, it's the same record. Um, so I was in, I was going to high school school in Evanston and my friends and I had heard that Madison, Wisconsin had these great Halloween parties. Uh, <clears throat> so I went up to Madison, Wisconsin on State Street and it was crazy um, and walked into a record store and bought Document right when it came out. And um, that, you know, I put the needle on when I, or maybe it was a CD, I put the CD on that that Finest Work song intro just, I was hooked within 10 seconds um and i had friends that already liked the band so i knew that you know i probably would like them but i didn't know i would like them that much so that record really pulled me in and i think that was the same for mike and then went backwards there was that eponymous release that was their kind of like wrap-up gift with irs records that that pulled those songs back in you know for, into my consciousness for the first time talk about the passion in particular was just i just couldn't believe how powerful that song was. And um, so going back, there's there was a number of songs on Murmur that I actually wasn't that familiar with, particularly the the last three. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, being a young person listening to records in that way. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Running out of uh, yeah, patience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you just like the beginning so much, you just play that over and over. So killer, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for me it was like um so I grew up in Kentucky and I I had a cousin that lived out in the in the sticks in a in a trailer um and I would go visit him sometimes on the weekends uh, my mom would take us out there cuz my grandma lived out there too and uh yeah I would just when I got there I'd go in his room and he he loved comic books we'd sit and look at comic books and stuff and and then one day he had a tape player and he and he started playing the cassette of uh, of document, and I was like, "Whoa, wait, what's this?" It's like, "Oh, it's been REM." So I really, yeah, I have my cousin Tommy to thank for that. Although I'm sure I would have found them eventually, but uh, yeah. And then you know, when I was in high school, I guess one of my favorite pastimes was kind of shuffling around listening to my cd walkman player uh, and yeah half the time probably it was an rem cd in there and uh you know it wasn't like music that uh, you play at the kegger or whatever it was kind of a solitary thing and you know i found it comforting you know uh, i was i was kind of a loner and it, it seems to appeal to that type of personality yeah 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 that's uh I, I i can say i don't know if you uh michael know where uh, litchfield is that's actually where i'm from oh. down closer to bowling green and um, i lived in bowling green for a couple of years yeah yeah what's well, this right it's about 20 minutes uh just north of bowling green and and for those sections and i know you sort of had that chicago connection too but but for music to find you know any of us in the middle of nowhere was yeah. always and and it was it was already it wasn't until really the monster record and i was in school and and someone at the bus put the headphones over my ears from behind and bang and blame was one of the songs playing <laughs> wow. and but it, it it just that's what i started thinking about was like especially in those pre-internet days for both of you you know for music to find you yeah. you know and for the right music to find you I don't know how you guys look back on that, but uh, but to me, it's like, thank God, you know, what what a great stroke of luck any of those moments could have been for us. Of course, of course. But, you know, I think that one of the things that's interesting about R.E.M. is without being like country or bluegrass or any sort of Appalachian rural kind of music, it still is very Southern music. Like those guys, they're they're very Southern and they're very like, you know they're still in Athens all the time um like the, the so it's it's fascinating to me because it's it's southern music without being like any genre of music that you associate with the south 
which is right. interesting but it like it suits the landscape um somehow like yeah. being out in the middle of nowhere this music is, is is a soundtrack for that you know when you now dive into it and jason you were kind of talking about you know having to to discover some songs for the first time which is fun but i was thinking about like there are moments on here like nine nine you know as a guitarist <laughs> <laughs> like are you finding those moments is it challenging in any way because i when i hear that i'm like man what just what a fun song that is anyway and mike correct me if i'm wrong but I, I, that was uh this whole thing is as a bit of a, a pop-up band you know mike and i've been doing shows like this for about 10 years and we just pick a record and then we rehearse once and do the show it's real by the seat of our pants but there's a lot of communication and particularly when a song like that comes up, there has to be a lot of communication. And I don't remember who brought it up, but somebody said, it might have been John Worcester, who said, uh, you know, I looked up video of the band playing that song, and every time it was pretty rough. And yeah. that gave me a little bit of breathing room where I was like, all right, we'll be fine. You know, as long as we <laughs> end at the same time. <laughs> you know? For the same thing, you know, Mike, uh, Michael, um, like, Stipe was infamous for mumbling those lyrics. And even me, even Radio Free Europe, as I was going back and thinking about this interview and, and going, you know, and listening to that song and watching you guys perform it uh, on Seth Meyers and hearing you very crystal clear in a way, I don't think I ever heard Stipe going, I never knew those were the words to <laughs> that song. Like, did you have uh, any issues with that? To be fair, I'm, I'm not sure that they are, you know, I mean, I... <laughs> I'm saying you you go. I mean, any record we do, uh, my approach is to a listen to the record at least a hundred times, if not more, and then b is to go online and do what any boob could do. Basically, is look up all the lyrics on like Genius or A to Z, and and sometimes uh, they don't. Depending on what site you're on, they're slightly different. And then, and then you know, the third part is just making a judgment call yourself and saying, "Well, this is what I'm going to sing because I can't. I have to sing something." But um, it was interesting. Even you know, if you listen to the record, I feel like when I'm looking at the lyrics online and listening to the record, that it actually m makes sense. But what's curious about it is uh, then you watch. Stipe performing it live and he's saying something different um like particularly with Radio Free Europe uh, one of the things I watched a lot was um their first performance on Letterman where they played Radio Free Europe and uh, South Central Rain before it even had a title um and it's an incredible performance but yeah what Stipe's singing on in that performance is is different than what's on the record but, you know, I had the fortune to talk to Mike Mills about it a little bit. And um, and he said, yeah, you know, Michael would, things would just come out. You know, it wasn't. Um, and, and frankly, I, I think that's, I think that's kind of interesting um, as opposed to some, I think it speaks to where the music comes from, that it's not like a calculated thing, you know, that they're, they're really, he, particularly Michael was really digging, looking for something and he wasn't quite sure what it was. And uh, I think that's very brave uh, to, to go about it that way, as opposed to having it all, all your T's crossed and your I's dotted all the time. You know? Yeah. Yeah, he's very much. Uh, I mean, you've done. He's done so many interviews over the years about, yeah, you because know, he's a collage style lyricist. You know, he he looks in his books and he finds phrases that sound good, and those become the songs. And you know that old Bill Burrow, William Burroughs sort of way. And uh, it's it's. I mean, he's one of my favorite lyricists because of that. But it's also hilarious to ever ask him what the song's about because most of the time it's, the fuck, do I know what that's about? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it sounds good. Well, I think it's about. I think it's about what it, I think it's about something different for everybody who listens to it, you know? Mm -hmm. I think the songs, I look at them, they're evocative and what they evoke is really, you know, it's a 50-50 split between what the song is and what's lurking in your, you know, subconscious, which again is the kind of 
art I typically respond to, whether it's music or film or visual art or anything, really. Uh, I was just thinking about how R.E.M. over the years did such a great job of not only making great records for so long, but associating themselves with great bands and great artists. And so I wonder if in that process, and this was during a time when people released records every year or more than once a year, that <clears throat> they would just listen and go, it sounds good, <laughs> you know, like not, yeah. not, Hey man, go write some more lyrics or something like their, their judgment for so long has been so strong that I wonder if that was part of it. It's like, is this done? Yeah. It sounds yeah. great. You know, yeah. regardless of like, what are you saying there? You know? Yeah. And even, I mean, you talked, you both talk about them taking chances. I mean, even, you know, one of their biggest songs with Losing My Religion, that's Peter Buck learning to play the mandolin right there. And, you know, can we get away with a riff this simple? Was never even questioned. Like, here it is. No I've chorus. Yeah, no chorus even. No yeah. chorus at all. You know, that's amazing. And for what it's worth, so you guys are playing more than Murmur, right? You're, you're playing other, is it all 80s songs? Or are you doing, what, what's what's the deal with the, the whole show? Well, Murmur's a short record. Um, and we knew going into it that we would, we didn't want to leave people high and dry. So I, you know, I, I there's a, there's a stable of uh, songs that we'll have at our disposal. You know, the first two shows, February 1st and 2nd at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, uh, we're actually playing uh, Murmur on the first and we're playing Reckoning on the second. So we're going to learn Reckoning. So we'll have those songs in our arsenal. And um, we stay pretty far back. Uh, there's one song that's kind of more recent that we might play, depending on what mood I'm in uh, from time to time. But uh, we're trying to keep it in, in the early stuff, uh, by and large. Yeah, because it's just, uh, you know, the thing I was thinking yesterday is, um, Another sign, I think, of a really amazing band is that each of their records has its own identity and sound. And I feel that way with R.E.M. It's like every record is so distinctive and, and unique. And I don't want to just be like a Spotify shuffle playlist. Like I, I want to, and I think the other guys feel the same way. We want to stay in that that neck of the woods, that early neck of the woods. I'm excited to see any of this and uh, to hear from it. And uh, I know I'm up against the clock. I want to quickly bring us a, a bit into the present just to say that, um, uh, Jason, I, I love the stuff that you do as Split Single and uh, the uh, Amplificado record was fantastic. Oh, so thank you, Kyle. Gonna, I'm going to hear from more of that. And, Speaking of Mike Mills. <laughs> right. And, uh, and, and playing with Bob, I have Bob Mold on here a lot. I'm hoping he gives us another blue album this year since it's an election year. That seems to be a good luck thing. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that stuff's coming up. And uh, and Michael, with you, um, you know, I, I see Ray Rizzo quite a lot. You think there's any more corporal in you? Oh, dear. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, Ray's so busy and I'm so busy. And I've, I've had pretty severe writer's block. I have a bunch of songs that are like half finished. And, you know, I don't know. The, the fellow that played guitar with us, Rob Beitzel, moved out to L.A. We haven't seen him in years. Uh, I mean... I love playing with Ray. I miss playing with Ray. Um, if 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 the stars align and, you know, the thing about Corporal is it kind of came into being at a time where um, I was I was unemployed for a certain period of time. So it, it, it that's kind of what uh, allowed it to happen. So I, I, I you know, um, we'll see. We'll see. We're, you know, raised in like 20 bands. You yeah, know, he's he a busy, busy fella. Yeah. May yeah. keep himself busy. Yeah. Uh, just the same. I'm such a fan of what both of you all do and all of your arts. Uh, and, and it's so fun, you know, to to geek out about one of the greatest bands of all time with REM. I'm so happy you guys are doing this. But especially thank you both for taking the time to talk about it today. Seriously, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks, nice Kyle. Finally talk to you, Kyle. Have a great day. Bye. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.